It is now known as CHAZ, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. The self-proclaimed independent area of six blocks sealed off in Seattle's Capitol Hill neighborhood, controlled and organized by protesters who drove police from a local police precinct there, and they have declared it a police-free zone. You know, this comes amid calls to defund and reform city police departments across the country. So, how will CHAZ eventually be dismantled? Steve Rogers joins us, former member of the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force, retired lieutenant detective for the Nutley, New Jersey Police Department. Steve, first, what is the message of these protesters? Uh, what are they sending by establishing what they say is their own territory, police band inside a major American city? Well, it's very confusing because they don't even know, I believe, why they're there, other than they're anti-government anarchists. Now, Eric, keep in mind that as these politicians begin to drain the treasuries of these police departments, I hope they're going to use some of that money to buy hospital beds by the hundreds because they're setting these cities up for a cataclysmic uh, rise in crime. That, that, that's number one. And think about this. You talked a little bit about defunding on your broadcast here. Well, New York City, a billion dollars. Think about this chilling thought. New York City is the number one target on the face of this earth for terrorism. So what we're going to see is as police departments begin to get defunded, you got foreign terrorists, you got domestic terrorists. It's all being set up for a perfect storm to do a lot of destruction across this country. Well, Steve, defunding is not disbanding. Uh, and you've been out on the streets, you know, with the, the pressures that police officers have to face. Uh, and God bless those good police officers, the overwhelming beyond number that are out there. I mean, look, you've got to be a marriage counselor. You have to be, uh, deal with domestic relations. You have to deal with the homeless. You have to deal with young kids. You, you have to be a social worker. You have to be a psychologist, a psychiatrist. Uh, shouldn't some of those issues be better dealt with by other areas of government, at least that's the argument by those who are saying, let's, let's shift some funds from police departments to other departments in, in municipal budgets. Well, Eric, I would suggest that defunding is their politically correct way of dismantling. Look, when you defund the police department, guess what's being affected first? Manpower. I've been on the job 38 years. And there's no way on earth that someone that does not have the training, as our police officers do, but are armed to protect themselves and other victims, are going to be effective at a domestic violence complaint. Those issues could turn around quickly and there could be a lot of people killed. So they're dreaming when they believe a psychologist could walk into something like that. And what about active shooters? We have resignations of police officers now around the country from these tactical units. They don't want to get involved anymore because their government leaders are not backing them up. This is an ingredient uh, that, that are going to be, again, and I'm not, I'm not a, drama, a guy that believes in drama, but I got to tell you, it's going to be cataclysmic if they do not uh, make sure that our police departments are fully funded to do the job they've been doing. Well, let's go back uh, for a moment and take a look at Chaz. I mean, this is an area where the police are not allowed. Liter literally took over a police precinct. Here's President Trump talking about that. So the police walk out of a precinct and give it up to people that are anarchists, in my opinion. Now, we can call them whatever you want. They're not protesters when they take over a large portion of a city. And that's a city that had a pretty good reputation Police-wise soft, but it was soft because of a mayor. So this was not Rudy Giuliani, who was a great mayor. You know, Steve, we've seen self-proclaimed uh, independent areas before. We had Waco. Uh, I covered that. I was there back in, uh, in 1993. 86 people were killed, including four ATF agents. The Freeman Movement in Montana, I covered that too up in, uh, in Montana. That was 81 days of standoff in 1996. Uh, we're looking at Waco now. And I covered the Republic of Texas down in the Big Bend, Texas, where they raised their own Republic of Texas flag that uh, ended peacefully, thankfully, in 1996. So how do authorities regain and can they regain control of Chaz when the mayor of Seattle is calling it the summer of love? I mean, what do you think will happen? How do you think this will play out? Others say, just let him be. Let him stay there. What do you think is going to happen? History tells us, as you just articulated, that this is not going to end well. 
The way to minimize what can happen, and I'm talking about a violent confrontation with police, is to have the police go in. And I know people get upset when the president used the word dominant. I use the word overwhelming. But the president was right. You need dominant and overwhelming force, not excessive force, but dominant and overwhelming numbers of law enforcement people to go in and to take complete control of these areas. They could do it effectively. They could do it quickly. And it'll probably be the best method of reducing any violent confrontation. Well, it seems for now the authorities will uh, let them be and let them remain, the citizens of the uh, Chaz, whatever it is, uh, with, uh, with, with what they're doing. All right, Steve, thanks so much. Good to see you. My pleasure. Thank you.